Hello everybody and welcome. We had fun doing the raku, didn't we? And I've still got some pots that I need to raku off, uh, plus some other ones that I want to show you. And we'll do a clip or a resume, if you like, or critique of the um, of some of those finished raku pots. Not all of them came out well. Some were some were bad, some were mediocre, and there were a few quite nice ones. But that's always it's always a bit like that, isn't it, when you do raku? Uh, right now, at the moment, I'm actually involved here in trying trying to get my converted electric kiln. That's this fella converted from ele electric firing to gas firing, propane gas firing with, with two weed burners, getting this uh, finished so I can get some high temperature firings. Um, I've just been constructing a chimney here on the inside. Let me just snatch the camera off the tripod um, just to show you what I'm talking about. Uh, you, you can see, if I lift the camera, let's say way up there to the ceiling, uh, looking down you can see how the chimney is actually constructed uh, within, within the walls of the, of the kiln and not on the outside as it once was. If you remember, the kiln had its, its, its chimney flue here on the outside. Well, I've now shifted it into the inside. Um, I think it's going to fire more efficiently. The downside is I've had to sacrifice a little bit of space, as you can see, um, just there, where the chimney is. On the right side over here and down where I'm pointing, you can see the, the, what, the, uh, the take-up flue, as it were, that takes the the downdraft gases, receives them down there at the bottom of the kiln, takes, takes them underneath the shelf. Hang on, I've got a bit of chalk. We can chalk this out, can't we? Gosh, back to school. <laughs> okay, I've... I don't know if you can see them, I put a couple of arrows there. Um, so, yeah, so that there, that basically gives you the, uh, the, the format of the kiln. Of course, a downdraft kiln, with a downdraft kiln, we, we're, not, we're, not, we're not allowing, we're not allowing the, the gases to escape through the roof of the kiln. Do you know what I mean? A lot of kilns have just got flames come in at the bottom, hole at the top, and they just go straight out. Well, of course, you can't really attain very high temperature uh, by that kind of firing. So what you have to do is close off the top of the kiln, which then, of course, hot air rises, the flames and the heat go right up to the top of the kiln, but they, they can't escape, and they are forced down again and that's what that's what that is for there to receive the flames once they've come down takes them underneath the bottom shelf okay where I'm indicating and then up the chimney here and away okay I'm going to pop the camera back onto the back onto the tripod a moment um, It's actually, it's, a, it's actually quite basic stuff, but if you've only been used to firing in an electric kiln, this kind of kiln is a little bit different because we're firing with a live flame. Um, okay, I'm just going to talk very quickly a little bit about the, the chimney here and what I've been doing. So I've just constructed a chimney out of hard brick, all right, I bought... I bought a packet of this hard brick stuff down at my local Ace hardware store and uh, it's actually resting on the bottom shelf. In this instance, 
You see, there are many ways of d building a kiln. There are no hard and fast rules, really. There are a few basic rules, but there's a, quite a lot of leeway. So I've made up a, um, a brew here of uh, high temperature um, kiln cement. And telephone is ringing. Hang on a second. Hello? Yes. Damien, can you give me a call back in five minutes? I'm just in the middle of something. Thanks a lot. Okay, bye. Sorry about that, folks. Yeah, um, this kiln cement, I made it up myself. I hope it's going to work. It should do. What I did was I got um, high temperature... Um, high temperature blanket like this. I, I, I put it in an old liquidizing machine and I, and I liquidized it, of course, with, um, with water. So there was no, no dust getting in the air. So you just break, break this up into little pieces, put it in the old liquidizer. Like this, you see. Take it out, chuck the water out and take the fiber, squeeze out the water. Okay, and now then, I put that into a bowl, and to that I, I add um, some china clay, and what else did I add? Oh yeah, some fire clay, so fire clay, china clay, and chewed up ceramic fiber, and then to that, to that, I added about... This is sodium silicate, sodium silicate. I added about 15 or 20 percent of that then into this mixture. All right, now I know, I know someone's going to ask me, oh, could you give us the exact recipe? Well, I can't because I don't know what it was because it was a little bit, you know, I just sort of made it up really a little bit of this and a little bit of that and I kind of you could say, you could say possibly for an approximate, an approximation, something like 40% fire clay, 30%, oh, I don't know, say 30 fire clay, 30, 30 fire clay, 30 um, china clay, and 30 of this. Just make it up to 100% and then just add some of that sodium silicate and mix it, mix it all around. I think it's going to work, it should do. It should be pretty refractory and it's got the, the, the fibre, you see, in it which is going to help to bind it. Now where I, met, where I actually joined down the corners here of the, of the chimney, what I actually did was I got some of this fibre, you see, like this. Alright, I got a piece of fibre and I'm going to be a bit careful here because I don't want to inhale this because it can make, a, make you irritate your lungs. But taking a little piece like that you see and then, then wetting it, wetting it with water, okay, keep the dust down, keep the particles from, alright, and then taking some of this brew, spreading it on here like this, alright, just folding it a little bit like that, you see, and then that going into the corner all the way down the side here to form a kind of bandage in the corner to help to, to, to retain and stick this chimney to the rest of the to the rest of the the brick of the kiln. It helps by the way when you're working with this kind of stuff. Wet wet the bricks as you go as you're working with them. Otherwise, they're very absorbent, so it, it enables the, the workability of, the, of, of, of this stuff to stay moister if you moisten the bricks and things a bit. Okay, so that was that. I just wanted to share that with you because... Now, I, now if, if when I get round to... When I get round to um, firing this soon... 
I find that this mixture is actually not good that I've mixed up here, this refractory cement. I'll let you know, okay? Um, my next actual job that I've got to do inside this kiln, I'll just bring the camera in a touch more so you can see. My next job is to bat wash the bottom of the kiln. So I've got here um, a brew I've just made up of, of bat wash. All right, and you can make up bat wash like 50% china kept clay and 50% um, uh, what's the stuff called? This has gone out of my mind. Alumina, alumina hydrate, alumina hydrate and kaolin 50 50. All right, so what we're going to do now is keeping it nicely stirred. What I've got to do now is I've got to go over the, the bottom shelf. Now, incidentally, what I have done is I brought in the use of uh, a dear friend of mine, my little shop vac there, you can see. So with the shop vac, I have um, cleaned out the bottom of the kiln of all the dust and things. So that's never a bad idea to do that. All right, so what I've got to do now is I've got to... give the bottom shelf here a good coat of this mixture. This will enable, or prevent I should say, pots from sticking to the bottom shelf if they have a tendency to do so, and sometimes they do. So with, by giving the kiln a wash over like this, and this you need to do this, you don't need to do this every firing, but you know, every now and again you need to check, go over, give the kiln a, a, a brush over of this bat wash, or kiln wash. Okay, there we are, that's done. So there we are, folks. The sun is shining again. Today is a warm day. One thing um, you may probably, you may, you may, you may ask me, um, how do you know, how do you know, Simon, you've got the, the size of the hole here correct? Well, truth is, I don't know, but I'm going to give you the measurement anyway. I'll give you the measurement anyway. Here we are, I'll do it so you can see. It is, uh... Eight and three quarter inches. Oops, let me just incline that down a bit. Eight and three quarter inches long, that slot, and it is about two and a half inches wide. All right, eight and three quarters by two and a half. Now, if I'd made it nine, nine and a half, well, it probably wouldn't have made that much difference. What you don't want to do is have this hole here too small. Because if you have it too small, you choke the kiln, and the kiln cannot get up to temperature. Okay, so just remember that. I'm sort of, I'm guessing here a little bit with this, and I'm maybe slightly on the generous side. But it doesn't matter if I am, because I can put these bricks here, you see, to reduce the size of the chimney like this, as I need to. Now don't forget, folks, that the, the lid of the kiln is going to come down on here. The lid of the kiln, which is at the moment lying to one side over there, you see, that's the lid of the kiln. Now that's going to be hinged and it's going to close exactly right there on top of, on top of this. 
So what I'm going to have to do is cut a slot that corresponds with that dimension in, in that lid of the kiln. Okay? It's all very high tech. <laughs> no, it, it isn't really, but it, it's... You learn by doing and you learn, you know, you get you gain in confidence as you do things. Books are good, but you need to actually get out there and do it. So. Okay, well, I think the phone's going to be ringing again. That person's going to be ringing back. <laughs> okay, Simon Leach saying, ignite. Be inspired and keep practicing. We'll see you soon. Bye. Did it, did it.